Time for a fight for blood. <laughs> oh, nothing that serious, nothing that dramatic, but I did a similar casual video, I'm not working with a script here, uh, looking at the Pixel Fold and comparing it against some of the things that I really loved about the Surface Duo 2. And now that the OnePlus Open is here, I want to do something similar, talking about the pros and cons of different folding phone strategies. Two very different philosophies for expanding screen real estate and adding some better multitasking capabilities. Very generally, the Microsoft flavor of this is trying to replicate some of the gestures and interactions that we see in Windows 11, where the Android-y side of this equation is trying to find a little bit more of a tablet-style interface for occupying a single canvas. But with more screens and more screen size, we want the ability to get more stuff done. I'm pointing out a few of the more obvious hardware differences, the Duo is a dual screen device with actual glass on each panel. You don't have to worry about having a special stylus because you know, you're not working with a plastic screen here. And for that, the hinges wrap all the way around. Had a lot of people in my comments talking about how, oh, it needs to have flex mode. And except the Duo is literally flex mode. We don't have any kind of cover display because if you want to go single screen, you just wrap it to one side. And this gives the Duo just a little bit more natural flexibility in some of the alternative modes and features that you might want to use from a mini folding tablet. The OnePlus Open is more familiar in that samsung -y Z Fold and Pixel Fold kind of bending, folding plastic screen. When we close it all the way, we need a cover display. I like that there's a continuity of behavior here where you can tell the phone to transfer between the inner and outer displays, or like you just saw, you can use a gesture. So I've got this open, I'm gonna close it, and then there's a little gesture for me to turn the outer display back on. Little tweaks like that that we're gonna talk about help elevate this above just Android 13 and the more tablet-y interface that we have for Android these days. But a few of the hardware differences matter, not only just between the Open and the Duo, but also some of our other phones like the Pixel Fold. First up, we gotta talk about the crease. It is one of the least distracting creases that I've played with yet, but you still can see it. And depending on how the lighting is in your location, you still might get it to kinda refract some of that light in between the two panels that the screen bends over. And I wanna take a little care to point this out that the hinges have this little semicircular bit that pops up. Now, I don't know if this is a necessary part of the hinge mechanism, or if maybe this is some type of attempt at giving you a little bit of buffer if the plastic screen ever ends up face down. Unlike the completely smooth duo hinge action, there is a little bit of a snap as you close this. And if you try to stand the open up, if it's too open, it'll snap all the way and then your, your foldable is gonna end up face down. One of the features that I really liked on the Pixel Fold was its ability to go into sort of a tent mode. You see how the outer display is still on, even though it's partially opened, it takes a bit more of that gesture to turn on the inside dis inside screen because there are times you're not gonna want the foldable sitting flat, like if it's a really rough surface, like you're out at a park and you wanna prop up part of the screen. Because of the snap on that hinge, the OnePlus Open is a lot more sensitive to turning on that inner display. You try to prop it up, you have to make sure that you've got enough clearance that the outer display will stay on but it's a little finicky in that regard compared to the Pixel Fold and is definitely not as versatile as the dual display duo here where just about any kind of orientation or placement or position is going to be understood by these two screens. It's silly, but I have to keep showing it off because of the way that we, we add these really nice camera modules and the Open has some of the best cameras on a foldable that I've tested yet. It means that this thing is not going to lay perfectly flat and it's one of the rocky foldables that I've reviewed so far. Thanks to the fluid hinge, you can kind of make the Duo rest however you want it. For example, right now I've got a camera bar on this side and the stylus is magnetically on this side. And it creates this nice, stable, flat, sort of V, slightly scooped book like shape. If I want to, I can take the pen off and get one side resting perfectly flat. And while then I have a little bit of a rock just in this bottom corner, the operation of this is really flat and solid and consistent. But for those hardware differences, I, I have to admit to being a little shocked at how well built the Open is for not only the additional camera hardware, but the whole extra screen here on the outside, the Open is noticeably lighter than the Duo 2, even with the included plastic bumper that I've got on the outside 
of this foldable. It's shocking engineering when you pick it up and it really doesn't feel significantly different than any other phone. It's really the bummer with the Duo and the Duo 2 that they never really got a lot of accessory attention, not a lot of accessory love. Even a really inexpensive cheap case for the Pixel Fold is fitting this really, really well. I never found something analogous for the Duo or Duo 2. One item of personal preference, I've always enjoyed big, fat, chunky displays. I've loved Blackberries. There were those classic LGs that had these really wide form factors. I don't think the Duo ever proved itself as being a great phone, but it was my favorite folding mini tablet. In a couple weeks of use, I really appreciate that the OnePlus Open is going to be a little bit more familiar in this outer screen form factor to folks that have used more modern smartphones. This is a 20 by nine aspect ratio outer display, right in line with a lot of our other phones, and it's gonna feel a little bit smaller, even though it is a double thick sandwich because it's really not that heavy. But that also means opening it up. This is a very square-ish inner display. You can see we have a slightly longer rectangle of continuity and display on the duos than we do on the OnePlus Open. For folks that have been keeping track of the foldable market so far, a lot of my commentary is gonna regurgitate this same point. A lot of the decisions OnePlus has made, the Open sort of exists as something of a halfway point between the more Android-y version of this idea and the more Microsoft version of this idea. Long press the inner display on a Pixel Fold, it shows up a little bit more like a tablet interface. Long press the inner display on the Surface Duo, and it shows you this sort of split between individual home page panels. Long press the home screen on the Open, and it shows up more like this sort of panel UI. OnePlus is adding their own little compatibility layer. There's a bit of software in between the apps and the operating system that helps try to trick apps into different aspect ratios and different formats. That feels a little bit more like what Microsoft was doing where every app opens in a standard half page portrait view. The process on the open is still a little backwards if you're familiar with the Duo. The thing I love about the Duo is that either side can just be the app drawer and then that's where the app is gonna open. You're automatically thinking in terms of multitasking and dual display. I want a file explorer up, I want a web browser up. They open on the panel that you slid your app drawer from. On a slightly more Android-y flavor of this, you always have to think in terms of first app, second app. I open up my web browser, now I think, oh, I'd also like a file explorer up. I go to my file explorer and I drag it over here. That's how that gesture is accomplished on an Android tablet. I feel the Surface tablet's gestures are a little bit more organic. Now, none of this is intuitive. You've got to live with it and figure it out. I don't believe anything is intuitive. I only believe in varying degrees of familiarity. But if you've ever moved Windows around on Windows 11, then the way that we slide and move things back and forth and that they snap to different panels, that should be pretty familiar. The Android-y flavor of this can feel a little unfamiliar because up to now, we've been using things like this multitasking view to go into floating and split screen windows. I think Samsung actually deserves a lot of credit. They've been doing really good work in finding alternative methods for using this bottom dock to get other panels of apps front and center. And now OnePlus is doing something similar with this little shortcut that brings up an app drawer on top of an app that's running behind. And now we just have to get consumers a little bit more familiar with how each of these foldables tackles this action in slightly different ways. I don't wanna keep bringing up the Pixel Fold in a comparison between these two, but it's similar. We bring up one app, then we also bring up a dock, then the traditional app drawer slides up from the bottom, and that's where we long press this, drag it over, and we get that action to have split screen apps instead of working through the multitasking view in Android. That's not a difficult process to enact, but the user has to know what that process looks like. And my general concern when we see this type of interaction on a tablet is the familiar action is just using one app at a time. With very little conveyance here after initial setup, you go to tap on something and now you've just got another full screen app. And then you bring this up and then you go to tap on something and you just get another full screen app. It's something I don't think Microsoft ever got enough credit for was making this action really elegant, but very clearly directing the user into this single pane view. It is not a normal aspect of the duo to pull an app across both panels. That's not really what it was designed to do. Other foldables with plastic screens really do encourage this sort of single view, larger canvas, really spread out all of that app information. But as you can see, 
it doesn't really mean that you have a better viewing experience and you often get less content on your screen when you force a mobile app into this type of view. Microsoft was also really clever in creating some custom ways to move files around. And I think OnePlus is sort of following in that tradition. That's that's one of the areas where I feel there's some, some acknowledgement of other ways of getting this stuff done. My favorite thing to show off here, let me go into my audio editing app. This is Audio Evolution, and I've been making videos on Audio Evolution for years now. This is not a new app, but it's been really well updated over the various years that I've been playing with it. When you open up audio, you've got to go through these types of menus and file dialogues with built-in file explorers to get to that content. It's one of the major things that's kind of a hassle in going mobile is figuring out the workflow on every single individual app, as opposed to a desktop operating system where we would just normally drag and drop files over. Well, no longer. So if you've recently recorded something and you want to go directly into editing it, we can open up this little recents folder here. And this is surprisingly well supported by a lot of apps, not all. So you can't just drag and drop photos into every single app, every messaging app or any document apps. We have to wait for other apps to catch up and realize the kind of environment they're being used in. But this ancient audio recorder here, I can long press on this, drag it over, and it just populates audio. And I can go right in to working on it, cutting it, trimming it, editing it. This is beautiful. I feel Google should have worked with Microsoft better, borrow some of these good ideas from the Surface, but if Google's gonna crib anything for the future generations of Android, it's this type of file system awareness. We're so used to working like this on other computers, this would be a huge shot in the arm for Android. So Google, you should probably talk to OnePlus. I mentioned the software differences and you know, like I really like this natural two panel arrangement for apps, but I also really want to commend OnePlus for trying to expand the canvas around the screen. Something uh, here we can uh, flip open a second app and now let's also open up a third something that won't hopefully give up a whole bunch of personal information. We drag it into this extra space. And now we've got a three panel arrangement, but I really like this natural look. If I want something in the file explorer, I tap, it moves over. If I wanna go back to the photos, each piece of this is still accessible. And if I wanna reformat so that I can see all of the apps at the same time, I can do this sort of claw pinch with four points. This is the tricky thing to figure out with the OnePlus Open though. Again, it's working on this layer in between the apps and the OS to fit all of these different pieces and to make this a little bit more organic. It's a little bit more gesture based. But as you saw, I went to three apps and they all showed up in portrait mode and you've gotta be very particular about what apps are gonna show up in landscape like video streaming and gaming apps. A gaming app will often show up in portrait orientation even though you'd really want it in landscape and that's really difficult for Android to figure out right now. If I wanna play a game and stream a video on the duos, this happens very naturally. You just put the game on the bottom, you hold the whole thing, play the game from here, and you've got video playing on your top panel. There's a lot more of a process to make that happen on the OnePlus Open. The most frustrating aspect of that is that our, our video streaming apps are technically in portrait. So even though I have this in landscape, what I technically have here is a portrait orientation. And if I drop another app next to it, it's not gonna detect landscape it's gonna act like this is a portrait orientation phone. And so then when I play the video from here, it's going to play in a really silly letterboxed portrait view. Now using the OnePlus, now using the OnePlus application layer, I can switch back and forth. I can pull up the file explorer, kind of shove the video to the side, but I've got portrait orientation. Doing this the right way, let's see if we can figure this out. So I've got the video now playing in landscape, and now I want to try and get, let's try and fire up a game. I know Balloons has been playing nice. So now I can drop this into a half screen. And now I've got both of these in the orientation and the aspect ratios that I would wanna see. Now this one's really tricky because we don't have a lot of conveyance on the order of operations to make sure that plays out the way that it should. And this is what's so messed up about Android right now. It's not a fault of any of the individual manufacturers, Google included. Android is used to a very particular set of screens and shapes, sizes, and aspect ratios. And 
when we start getting into more of this advanced, you know, two apps at the same time kind of strategy, we really don't have a consistent solution to tell the app this works in this shape in this orientation and it works in a different shape on a different orientation. We kind of have to stumble through the process every single time to get to something that makes sense for the consumer. I know I get made fun of a lot for still coming back to the Duo, still holding them up as uh, examples of how to do mini tablet stuff, but it's why I keep pointing this stuff out. There were very good ideas here that I wish Google had been able to adopt, at least in a way that would help users not have to stumble around quite so much. Because it's those little things, I, I don't want to give uh, tech reviewers out there too much credit, but it's those little things. You try to do something a bit more advanced, it doesn't work the first time, the tablet doesn't tell you how to arrive at a different conclusion, and you might just give up. I really don't know how precious that is when we're talking about a $1,700 foldable that someone's going to go, uh, I open an app, and then I open another app, and it didn't open the way I want, so I'll return it. Because I feel at $1,700, we have to trust that there's an audience of people out there that have a modicum of curiosity on how these things should work, but it is a situation where I wish there was a little bit more informed handholding. But I think that kind of handholding should be a little bit more direct in how we do app pairs, and we really need better solutions for changing this in the app pairs. For example, I've got a web browser right here. Maybe I do want that in a landscape orientation, but I don't want to lose the two other apps that I've got right now. I can't really do anything to fix that. I can't drag this around or reorient or change the aspect ratio. It's locked in on portrait. Even turning the open sideways, it just turns them all back into portrait orientation in a landscape form factor. And I can't, I can move them around. I can change the order, but I can't change the shape. So I don't think anyone's really nailed it yet. I keep praising the duos because I think they made better tablet decisions. I think Microsoft is better at making a tablet than any other company out there. I think it's totally fair to point out that the Achilles heel of the duo was its phone usage. This was not a very good phone, but it was a great folding mini tablet. Newer foldables from Samsung and Google and OnePlus, I think they're a better combination of the two. I think these are much better phones, but some of this tablet-y stuff, we could learn a few lessons from what the duos were doing. Now, I don't wanna get too bogged down in the rest of the comparisons here. I, you gotta appreciate real fast charging. The OnePlus is just a monster for that. It's not really fair to even bring up generationally speaking, but we're definitely using a much better chip in here with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. That is a nice evolutionary perk between uh, the Duo, uh, especially the Duo 2 using a Snapdragon 888. But I think that last comparison point that I think folks are really gonna appreciate, and it, it was one of the criticisms of the Duo I don't think the Duo, again, I don't think it ever really got the coverage or the follow through that it probably deserved. Definitely at launch, I think the camera performance on, on the Duo 2 was pretty weak. It's not really what I wanted out of the Duo. But one of the things I don't think they, that this, uh, this foldable ever got enough credit for were the camera updates. The software got a ton better. I'm shooting this in a really dark office just to kind of properly light my table and not have a whole bunch of glare on the screens. And just a quick off the cuff, totally blind selfie from that rear camera, this camera performance was pretty good. Now, pretty good for such an expensive foldable is one of those sliding scales of criticism that I think is appropriate. Someone is gonna have more demanding camera concerns and you know, the Duo 2 probably wouldn't have done it for them. But the evolution that we've seen very recently from our Pixel Fold, which has very good cameras on it, now to the OnePlus Open, where I think OnePlus might be delivering the best cameras on a foldable to date. All three of these cameras have some really fun tricks at play, like the telephoto camera, this is a six times zoom. So this is already a two time crop from that smaller telephoto sensor and we're getting phenomenal performance out of a telephoto catch an action squirrel in the shade. Or one of my favorite photos, this is a two times crop zoom from the main sensor and I'm getting this amazing shot yet again of another little bug here. This is a little jumping spider trying to cool off in the shade. Not just great hardware, I think the software and this Hasselblad partnership has done wonders for OnePlus's camera stack and you feel like this is less of a compromise over a more photography focused phone. We, we should point out, you know, when we're looking at a productivity device, no one phone can have all of the same bells and whistles and benefits and perks, but we don't want to feel that when we're spending well over $1,000, when we're closing in on $2,000,
that we're being asked to make more substantial compromises. So I think that's about where we're gonna wrap up this little comparison here. Like I said, no script, no no hard hitting investigative journalism or long-term reviewing, but it was something that I feel was a, a fun conversation to have with the Pixel Fold. And it still shows the wide variety of experiences and philosophies that are at play. The, these foldables, this is still the wild west in terms of smartphone design. And there's a lot that we still need to play with. And there's a lot that we still need to educate consumers on to get folks up to speed before we can start acting like there's one way to do a folding mini tablet. I'm very encouraged over this last year with a bit more competition in this space that we're starting to relearn some of these lessons, incorporate them into practical consumer products, and these are becoming more ready. So folks, stay tuned. We have a lot more to talk about on the OnePlus Open. I'm gonna be producing a, an in-depth look at the cameras that's gonna be going live to my Patreon patreon.com slash some gadget guy. And I'm going to be partnering with my buddy TK Bay again. We're going to be doing a, another pair of videos on his channel and on my channel talking about the OnePlus Open versus the Pixel Fold. I'm going to be on his channel to talk about the differences between these two. And then he's going to come visit my channel because he spent a little bit more time with the Galaxy Z Folds to talk about OnePlus versus Samsung. Spoiler alert, there's no such thing as a clear winner in this space. And anyone who tells you differently is trying to sell you a particular flavor of bias. But we're going to have a lot of fun looking at all those little nooks and crannies, pros and cons, and the differences between what these different companies are putting out. So folks, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, and subscribing to the channel. If you go down near the description and smash that bell icon, all the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. I really appreciate all the folks who are doing things like visiting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or you know, clicking on links in the descriptions below, or maybe you've joined the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. And this list of names is the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. And they'll of course get exclusive access to things like my camera deep dive videos, one of which will be coming soon on the OnePlus Open. They're basically the coolest tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet? At some gadget guy across all the web these days, but I'm spending more of my time on the Mastodons, a little less so on the Instagrams and the Twitters, but I will catch you all on the next comparison.